so good morning to all of you uh, today we are going to discuss measures of association and in which uh, i'll be discussing the concept of covariance and correlation the relationship between two variables and then uh, uh, as an extension of correlation we'll be also discussing the concept of regression and in today's session we'll be covering the simple regression form of the regression so uh, measures of association now we'll start with this uh, ppt if you just look at these two variables i am having a table with two variables one variable is temperature in degree celsius and second variable is ice cream sales in dollars and i have uh, the table of uh, temperature against ice cream sales now if you look at the uh, temperature values when the temperature values are in 14 the ice cream sales is in the range of 200 dollars <coughs> when the temperature sign in the, in the, in the 15s Then the ice cream sales in the range of three hundred dollars. When it is sixteen, then uh, or so it is in three uh, hundred plus uh, dollars. So as I'm increasing the temperature, the sales ice cream sales is also increasing. So if I try to plot a scatter diagram for this data, I am going to get something like this. So from scatter diagram itself, I can say that there is a upward trend. There is a positive relationship. that means as temperature increases the ice cream sale also increases so we can easily see that warmer weather leads to more sales temperature and ice cream sales are related to each other and it is positive relationship so this is one type of relationship what we can have now look at this example i have another data set and uh, without giving data set i am directly giving the scatter diagram for that Uh, it is again it is of uh, ice cream sales against sunglasses sale of sunglasses so even in this uh, diagram you can see as the sale of sunglasses is increasing the ice cream sale is also increasing now does this mean that sunglasses make people want ice cream does this mean that sunglasses make people want ice cream so actually though whatever available data i am having or maybe as some part of data i am referring to that data shows that there is some positive relationship between sell of sunglasses and ice cream sales but these are not dependent on each other like because of sunglasses ice cream sale is not increasing or because of ice cream sale sunglasses sell is not increasing so one variable is not causing the change in another variable one variable is not causing the change in another variable there is some external factor there is some external reason some third variable which is having impact on both of these variables because of which uh, these two variables have positive relationship so what is important to understand in case of analysis correlation and causation both are different correlation is just uh, we are trying to find out some relationship between two sets of numbers that doesn't mean there is some causation so correlation is not causation a correlation does not mean that one thing causes the other there could be other reasons the data has a good correlation now in case of analysis statistical analysis data analytics we can find out the correlation coefficient we can tell what kind of relationship is there in two variables but we cannot justify the causation we cannot justify the cause for the change in statistical analysis so correlation and causation are different now look at uh, this data set it is about number of leaves against height of the employees so as such the, you, you, i cannot have any kind of relationship in these data points i cannot plot even a straight line or uh, cannot plot even a curve or anything like that so uh, data points are very dispersed and i cannot have any kind of relationship logically also between number of leaves and height of employees so i can say height of height and uh, number of uh, leaves are not related to each other and it is a zero relationship that means there is no relationship so likewise we can have multiple types of relationships either we can have positive uh, or we can have negative or we can have no type of relationship zero relationship and there are some again shades into positive relationships there are some shades into negative relationship So we'll go into that uh, discussion de in the, um, more details in further slides. So measures of association in statistics dependence refers to any statistical relationship between two random variables or two sets of data. Correlation refers to 
any of broad class of statistical relationship involving dependence so that is what we have discussed that it is only uh, for deciding the relationship between two set of numbers for example correlation between demand of a product uh, demand for a product and its price uh, or correlation between electricity demand and weather yes so these are the examples of correlation and there you can also find causation it can be there causation can be there but we cannot use statistical analysis to prove the causation in above examples there is a causal relationship statistical calculations of correlation is to find dependency where causal relationship may or may not be present now there are several co uh, correlation coefficients often denoted by rho or r uh, measuring the degree of correlation the co we are trying to quantify the relationship between two variables so that is called as degree of correlation the uh, very uh, common of uh, these is uh, pearson correlation coefficient which we are going to use in this course uh, which is for linear relationship which is very sensitive for linear relationship between two variables so we are not going to uh, cover the non linear relationships and correlation coefficients for those so now we'll move into the calculation part if you want to quantify the uh, relationship then you can quantify into uh, different numbers and the range of those numbers is between minus 1 to plus 1 so as your uh, quantification of relationship or coefficient of relationship is close to minus 1 that means you are very close to very strong negative relationship and when i say strong negative relationship you can look at the diagram if i try to draw the train line if i try to draw the train line almost all the data points are very close to my trend line so deviation is very less the deviation is going to be very less in terms of very strong relationship be it negative or positive in this case it is negative now this is also negative relationship but it is not that strong relation uh, uh, negative relationship i can say it is a moderate negative relationship i can say it is a moderate uh, negative relationship that's why if you look at the coefficient from minus 0.9 it has become minus 0.5 now if i try to draw a trend line for this data set in my uh, uh, this in, in this data set the deviation of each data point from the trend line will be more compared to the first one the deviation or the distance of each data point from my trend line will be more compared to the first example where there is a strong negative relationship so as my data points come closer to my trend line i'll have a strong relationship and as my data points will go away from my trend line i'll have a weaker relationship i'll have a weaker relationship and there is no relationship so r value is zero i cannot draw any kind of line or curve or anything so there is no relationship in this diagram so value of r is equal to zero this is a positive relationship and this is a kind of moderate positive relationship this is again a strong positive relationship and now you look at this value of r is exactly 1 so if i draw a line trend line every data point will fall on that trend line that means r is equal to 1 so these are the different values which what we can have in the range between minus 1 to plus 1 so this is pearson correlation coefficient or product moment correlation coefficient denoted by small r and the value ranges between minus 1 to plus 1 and these are the <coughs> uh, ranges if it is between minus 1 to minus 0.75 we call it as strong negative because of negative sign then it is moderate negative minus 0.75 to minus 0.25 minus 0.25 to 0 is weak negative zero is no relation and likewise we have three uh, shades in the positive relationship so we can have these seven types of relationship the 6 plus 1 is non uh, no relation so there can be seven different categories of relationships what we can have between two variables now how to calculate now we have discussed what is correlation then we have discussed different types of correlation then we have discussed the range of correlation quantification of correlation now how to calculate correlation so for calculation of correlation this is the formula rxy which shows the relationship between x and y so rxy equal to numerator is xy s of xy that is uh, the covariance between x and y covariance between x and y divided by the standard deviation of x into standard deviation of y now how to calculate covariance between x and y this is the formula s of xy is equal to 
summation of xi minus x bar into summation of y minus y bar divided by n minus 1. Now in this case, uh, I'll, I'm, I'm not going into uh, the complete derivation of the formula, just what we have done for variance only. Uh, but I'll try to tell you why we have this formula for covariance. Now what is the formula for variance? What is the formula for variance? Variance it is xi minus x bar, the whole bracket square, summation and divided by n. So that is my formula for variance. Now because I'm trying to find the variance in one variable only, so I'm having xi minus x bar. Now I'm trying to find the variance between two variables, x and y. Between two variables, x and y. So instead of having square xi minus x bar square, what I'm going to do is I'm also going to add the deviation of second data point. Sorry, it is square is not divided. So xi minus x bar into yi minus y bar divided by n and then summation. So that is the same thing what we have as uh, the formula for covariance. Now, why we, uh, even if uh, you have seen some statistical books, some uh, reference books, some textbooks on uh, some internet content, uh, you will find this thing that whenever we talk about population, whenever we talk about talk about population, generally we refer n in the denominator, and whenever we talk about sample, generally we refer n minus one in the denominator. Even in this case, because this is sample covariance, we are saying n minus one. So why this is the case? That in case of population we use n, and in case of sample we use n minus one. Actually, this concept is called as degree of freedom. This concept is called as degree of freedom. And this is also denoted by DF. In multiple statistical tables, as we are going to use some of them, you will see this notation DF, degree of freedom. So what is this concept of degree of freedom? If anybody is aware of this, degree of freedom, what is this? Why we consider N minus one for samples? Yes, anyone? What is degree of freedom? Okay. So I'll explain uh, the concept of degree of freedom with one example. Uh, I don't want to go into details of degree of freedom uh, uh, calculations also, but conceptually, you should be clear conceptually what is degree of freedom, why it is minus one only. In few cases, you will see degree of freedom of minus two, minus three also. I'll tell you the reason of that also. Suppose I tell you that I want to have, or I want to do, sorry. I want to do addition of three numbers. I want to do addition of three numbers. And that addition, I want to be anything. Suppose zero, minus one, minus two, suppose 10. I want to select three numbers such that the addition of three numbers is 10. Now, do you have complete freedom? Do you have complete freedom to select your first number? Answer is yes. I have complete freedom to select any number as my first number. It can be zero. It can be any negative number. It can be any positive number or it can be any fraction. It can be anything. It can be anything. Suppose my first number is 3 by 7.5, anything. Considering I have something as my first number, do I have complete freedom to select my second number? Do I have complete freedom to select my second number? Still the answer is yes. Be it uh, the first number, anything uh, uh, can be the first number, but I can have again, I can have zero, any positive value or any negative value or any fraction. I can have anything as second number. Suppose minus 1000. It can be anything. 10,000, minus 10,000. Now considering that I have selected something as first number and something as second number, do I have any freedom to select my third number? Answer is no. I don't have any freedom to select my third number because considering first number and second number and what result I want, I cannot have any freedom to select third number, but I have to consider my third number. So how many degree of freedoms I have? 
in selection of three numbers is I have one degree of freedom less that is three minus one that is n minus one. So first we'll start with a simple data set. So how to calculate correlation? Now again there are two methods to calculate correlation. We have two methods in Excel. First method is either you can directly uh, use the formula correlation. So put equal to and the formula is C O R R E L correlation into bracket. Now it will ask for two arrays because we are trying to find the relationship between two variables. So array one and array two, variable one and variable two. So I'll select the first variable, all the values, comma, second variable, all the values. Closing bracket. So I'm getting the correlation value as minus 0 0.9688. That means it is a strong negative relationship. It is a strong negative relationship. Okay. Now, uh, second method, how to calculate correlation using second method. Second method is again go to data, go to data analysis, and there you will find one method called as correlation. One tool called as correlation. Click on OK. It will ask for input range, input range considering the both the variables. So I'll select all the numbers, including labels, including labels. Group by columns, yes, my values are grouped by columns. Uh, Multiple times uh, you have seen this option group by columns and group by rows. So uh, I'll just explain you uh, in some cases you may have uh, your data sets in this format. So let me check whether I can. Have, yes. If your data set is in this format, in row format, then you have to select the option group by row because my values are grouped by row. One row represents my one variable. In this case, my one column represents my one variable. So based on that, you have to select that option. So in data analysis, what is the meaning of, uh, okay, fine, I'll select the input range. But group by columns means my one variable is in one column. If this is your data set, then you have to select by rows. Okay, fine. So labels in first row, yes, I have labels in my first row. Output range, suppose I want to start my output from this location and I'll click on OK. I'll get the same value minus 0 0.9688 but now it is in the format of a table. So correlation of x with x has to be 1. Correlation of x with y is minus 0 0.96 triple it. Variable z and I'll suppose take these values from next problem for time being. So this is my third variable z and these are the values. Now I want to calculate the correlation between X and Y, Y and Z and X and Z, all three. So either I can go by this method, I can use correlation three times, sorry, comma this, then I can use again correlation for Y and Z. And then again, I can use correlation between X and Z. So this is X comma Z. Or I can go for data analysis option using a single click correlation input range. Now I'll select all three variables with labels and output range. Suppose I want to start my output from this location. Okay. <clears throat> so it is giving me the same values. But now on a single click, instead of using the formula for three times, I can get all the correlation values in one click in one table. So X with X is one, Y with Y is one, Z with Z is one, X with Y is minus 0 0.96, X with, uh, with Z is minus 0 0.12, and Y with Z is 0 0.33. So because Y and uh, uh, this uh, Y and Z correlation value is 0 0.33, the same value will appear in this cell. You can uh, consider the same value will appear in this cell. So it is not showing me all the values which are in upper part of the matrix above the uh, diagonal. So it is only showing me all the values below the diagonal because it is a symmetric matrix. All the below diagonal values will get repeated into the upper uh, diagonal matrix. So this is a lower diagonal matrix in mathematics uh, because it is a symmetric matrix. So I'll start the presentation. Okay. So the next logical concept after correlation is line of regression because uh, regression is an extension of uh, 
correlationship. Correlationship is the base for a regression concept. So what is line of regression? Now this uh, statement or the definition of regression is very important to understand because this definition is directly linked to the R square analysis. So we are going to do the R square analysis also in today's session. I'll tell you the basic uh, meaning of R square analysis. Regression indicates the degree to which variation in one variable X is related to or can be explained by the variation in another variable Y. Now this is the definition of regression. This is what regression means. Regression indicates the degree to which, now we are trying to quantify, degree to which the variation, we are trying to quantify the variation in one variable X, generally independent variable, in one variable X is related to or can be explained by the variation in another variable y. So if I have two variables x and y, how good, how good I can explain the variation in x because of variation in y or how accurately, how closely I can uh, explain the variation in y because of variation in x. How close I can explain the variation in Y because of variation in X. What degree of change will happen in Y if I change X? So that quantification is nothing but regression. So indirectly I'm trying to understand whether my X, whether my X is a good predictor of Y or not. Whether my variable one is a good predictor of variable two or not. Good predictor means whether X, if I change X, whatever change is happening in Y, can I mention that quantification of change in terms of some equation? Can I mention that quantification of change in terms of some equation so that next time if I just put the value of X, I can directly get the value of Y, which will be the changed value of Y. So that is the meaning of line of regression where I'm trying to find whether my variable one x is a good predictor of variable 2 y or not okay so that is the main concept of regression and actually this quantification whatever we have discussed this quantification is nothing but your r square value so i'll come to that once you know there is a significant linear correlation you can write an equation described uh, describing the relationship between x and y variables which is the line uh, equation of line y equal to mx plus b where m is the slope of the line where m is the slope of the line and b is the y-intercept so this is the equation of straight line y equal to mx plus b where m is slope and b is the intercept again when we'll go to the uh, excel i'll show you two different methods to calculate m and b in excel but right now we are going to see what actually happens in the background how this m is calculated and how b is calculated so these are the uh, uh, different formulas using which you can calculate M and B. So line of regression is written as Y cap is equal to MX plus B. Now why it is Y cap and now uh, why it is not plain Y equal to MX plus B? Yes, because this is a predicted value or expected value. So when I'm inputting some values for M, X and B, whatever comes as Y is my expected Y. The, uh, the same thing which we are uh, trying to discuss from day one. What I calculate using formula is my expected Y value. My actual Y value will be different. My actual Y value will be different. I'll tell you with example on next slide. So that's why it is written as Y cap. So it is the all expected values of Y if I put different values of X into this formula. And then how to calculate M which is a slope. This is the formula, a complex one. And how to calculate B which is Y intercept. It is y bar minus mx bar. So if you put all these values in uh, this formula, then you'll get m and b, and then using m and b, uh, you can get y cap values also. So the, suppose this is uh, the x variable and this is the y variable. <clears throat> so I have seven different sets <clears throat> of x and y variables. So uh, I write the equation of line of regression with x is equal to number of absentees and y is equal to final grade. So I guess the same data set I have given to you in uh, uh, data sets also in Excel. So, uh, and you have solved uh, the correlation value also for this data set and you have drawn the scatter diagram also, correct? And now while uh, drawing the scatter diagram, 
you must have taken x on x axis and y on y axis i i guess if not then uh, take x on uh, x axis and y on y axis so generally in case of analysis we have to uh, consider uh, when when we, we when we are talking about two variables we have to consider one variable as a dependent variable and uh, the second variable as independent variable now for example in this case when i say number of absentees and final grade so i am trying to uh, analyze the impact of absentees on my final grade i am trying to analyze impact of absentees on my final grade so where the impact is happening is on final grade because of absentees so the source becomes my independent variable the source for the change becomes my independent variable so number of absentees become my independent variable and where the impact is happening becomes my dependent variable so final grade becomes my dependent variable that's why i write equation y equal to something into x plus b so i always have the dependent variable as y and independent variable as x this is very important we always have the dependent variable as y and independent variable as x okay and that's why we can write y equal to some equation because we are trying to predict y okay so for this example now you have to calculate m and b so what my suggestion is uh, uh, we'll go to the excel methods that is fine but in excel itself uh, you have the data set formalized in front of you use all these things in excel for manual calculation use autofill option and everything and calculate m and b so you must have got these values the same excel calculation i have copied on this uh, slide so you need xy product column you need x square you need y square and then uh, there is only summation of few of the values if you put all the values and you get m as minus 3.924 and b as 105.667 so my line of regression uh, equation becomes y cap is equal to minus 3.924 x plus 105.667 so this is the data set i guess for which uh you have solved this problem Let's save this okay fine now the first method uh to calculate m and b and everything is scatter diagram which we have done already in first session itself so select all the numbers go to insert simple scatter diagram and you will get diagram something like this even the diagram uh, from the diagram you can see there is a negative relationship now there are no values on y axis uh, before 40 so i'll just change my y axis i'll go to y axis and uh, format axis the default start point is 0 i'll make it 40 okay now the picture is more clear fine now uh, this is a downward trend so it is a negative relationship <clears throat> and if i try to draw a trend line you can see all my data points will be very close to my trend line that's why the correlation coefficient is also on higher side this is a strong negative correlation so i'll draw the trend line so i'll click on add trend line and when i click on add trend line uh, there is one option called as display equation on chart also you can click on display r square for time being but if you display your equation on chart what equation you get is the same equation what you have received or you have calculated using manual calculation so value of m is minus 3.924 and value of b is 105.67 so it is the same thing I'll just increase the font size okay this is the same thing and look at all the data points all the data points are very close enough to my expected values so there is very less deviation from my expected value and actual value there is very less deviation between my actual value and expected value rather few data points are almost on my expected line okay so that's why uh, you can see r square is very high it is 0.95 i'll come to that in next few slides r square is very high because of less deviation okay so this is how you can uh, come to know the regression line equation this is method number one now i'll show you the second method also so i'll just reduce the size of this graph okay 
fine and now i'll show you the second method of calculating this equation and calculating m and b also so just go to data data analysis and in data analysis you will find one option called as regression in data analysis you will find one option called as regression just click on that it will ask for y and x values and that's why i told you it is very important to know what is your y and what is your x because if you put x values in y and y values in x the equation will go wrong okay so you have to put dependent in dependent and independent in independent so uh, first input y range so i'll select this input y range and for x i'll select this as x range i'm selecting with labels so i'll click on labels because my first row consists labels uh no confidence level uh, forget about this constant is zero confidence level default is 95% so we are going to discuss the concept of confidence level uh in monday monday session the session which will start on monday with hypothesis testing there will uh, discuss the uh, concept of confidence level in more details but right now keep it as it is default is 95% be it any kind of analysis be it any kind of tool excel spss sas the default confidence level is always 95% okay and then i'll uh, i want to start my output suppose from this location so that i can have a look at both the outputs scatter diagram and regression output just for understanding uh, what we have uh, discussed from day 1 is about the deviation of each data point from the expected value so i'll click on residuals that concept of deviation of each data from a point from my expected value is called as residual so i'll try to understand something from residuals also so i'll click on residuals i don't want anything else i'll click on it okay right now so this is what i get as a regression output and this is the residual output for this problem okay we are talking about this problem we are talking about this problem okay so this is my scatter diagram and then uh, this is my correlation value and this is my regression output now look at the equation the value of m and b if you look at the coefficient table now this output is divided into four sections for first is regression statistics second is anova statistics third is coefficient statistics and last is residual statistics okay so uh, when we'll complete this course uh, we will be completing all these tables and you will easily tell me all these numbers what what is the meaning of all these numbers okay so today we are starting with r square analysis and this coefficient analysis and uh, residual analysis so if you look at the coefficient output this is y intercept and this is x coefficient this is y intercept and x coefficient that means this is your b and this is your m so look at the values you have got the same values 105.668 that is your b and minus 3.924 that is your m so even using coefficient output you can get uh, all the uh, values which are required to create the equation even if you don't have scatter plot with you from coefficient table you can write your regression line equation now just look at the residual output i'll just get this scatter diagram here just look at the residual output now in this residual output look at the differences now what this residual output means if you look at the column headings also observation number data points i have seven data points according to the regression line according to the regression line using these coefficients this regression line equation what is my predicted y expected y what is my expected y for first observation and what is the actual value and what is that difference that is residual so predicted y is given actually is already is uh, there in your table the difference is given as residual so look at all the residuals look at all the residuals so data number 1 data point number 1 is at plus 3 difference plus 3.7 difference so it is above the line it is above the line so if you go and uh, just uh, put your mouse you will see this is data number data point number 5 590 data point number 5 590 likewise you can see which data point is there so this is data point number 2 292 this is data point number Eight. This is data point number nine, and so on. So, all the observations I'll get the residual values. That is a deviation of predicted y with the actual y from this line. In short, 
what is the distance of this point from this line what is the distance of this line from this point likewise and then if you can see the least difference is of this point even i cannot go to the point also because it is considering this as part of the line so we have all the residuals which are in a very short range and that's why the r square value is very high 95 when i say r square value is very high 0.95 uh, you can convert this 0.95 into 95%. So the uh, uh, strength in my model or the accuracy of my model is 95%. What is the meaning of this R square? Accuracy of this model is R square. If I try to predict Y by putting some value of X, I will be 95% sure that my Y will be very close enough to the predicted Y. I'll be 95% sure that my whatever calculated y will be very close to the predicted y. Okay, fine. So uh, we'll go into more details of R square, but R square shows the strength of the model, accuracy of the model. Indirectly, uh, that if you go back to the definition of regression, what is regression? If I change x, how much of that change x is going to impact y? That is given by regression that means i am trying to find whether my x is a good predictor of y or not whether my x is a good predictor of y or not if r square value is high enough that means 95 percent is almost very good out of 195 means very good if r square value is high enough that indicates this x is a good predictor of y this x is a good predictor of y now what this problem is about this problem is about x being number of absentees and y being the grade in the exam. So based on my data, whatever I have received, number of absentees is a good predictor of grade what you get in the exam. So if you will remain absent for more number of sessions, your grades will be on lower side. That is the indication. That is the meaning. So your number of absentees is a good predictor of the grade which what, what you get in the exam and i can say that because of this r square value which is very high which is 95 percent which is very good and even if you look at the residuals why r square is high because all the residuals are at very short range the um, um, minimum is minus three and maximum is plus three minus five to plus three it's a very short range considering the values okay and that's why r square is high. so this is all kind of analysis what you can do for a simple data set using scatter diagram and regression output. So this is your R square value. What you got on the chart. I'll go back to the chart now. I'll minimize the chart. Okay. So this is your R square value 0.95. It comes into this regression statistics table also. And this is these are your coefficient uh, outputs from the coefficient table. And this is your residual analysis from which uh, you can justify why R square is high enough because of these small deviations the r square is high enough because of which i consider that my x is a good predictor of y and that is all the analysis what i can do based on the scatter diagram and regression output then you can, uh, yes who is that so so, so you think i have a question um uh, when we say good predictor of y th yes. that good is subjective right so yes. here like when we are actually working in a practical or real world depending upon the situation and the availability of data sometimes we may accept uh, a bad numbers as a fair predictors uh, yes. like in a, in a covid we are trying to find some correlation between the thing and right. when nothing exists we may accept the lower indexes as a good predictors because of lack of data correct okay Correct. That is uh, the answer actually. That is not a question. That is actually the answer. Uh, and, and basically it is subjective. Your statement is very correct. And why it is subjective? Because uh, we cannot have a definite acceptance value for R square as a common value. It depends on the domain. Say for example, if you go to political science, if you're dealing with exit poll numbers or something like that, even if uh, your prediction is at 50% level, with 50% as R square value, uh, your prediction will be accepted very well because in political situations and everything even if 50 percent prediction is very good enough uh, so it uh, depends on the domain if you are going for medical sciences or scientific calculations uh, even 95 percent of r square is not enough you have to have 98 percent or 99 percent of r square value 
so again it depends on domain uh, with which domain you are dealing with what kind of data you have and what kind of research has been done on similar kind of data in the past if it is a kind of new research as you have very uh, well uh, uh, given the example of covid 19 because we don't have any past data available the maximum data what i can have is last three months maximum so in that case whatever data i have i have to accept that our value and go ahead as my uh, data will get mature i'll get more and more data in next three to four months then i can decide what is the minimum accepted value of r square yes thank you okay so uh, you can go to the next sheet in this excel that is talking about two variables education and earnings so the first variable education is trying to tell me what level of edu education my data points have so i am visiting my first data point the education level of that data point was eight and the earning what that data point is getting is 77 so this is education level and earning level so it may be in thousand 77 thousand something or this is three lakh eighty eight thousand so it's same education one is getting less earning one is getting more earning there can be multiple other reasons he may be a worker he may be an entrepreneur we don't know so uh, i'm trying to get i'm trying to have or i'm trying to understand some relationship between education and earning is there any relationship between education and earning first thing so first you calculate correlation second you draw scatter diagram third you draw trend line fourth you do regression analysis fifth you do residual analysis and number six based on all this analysis you conclude telling me whether education is a good predictor of earnings or not yes sir. okay so what is the correlation value it's 0. 0.422 okay so we'll just see the correlation value it is 0. 0.422 so i can say that this is a moderate positive relationship yes yes okay then the scatter diagram so we'll go for scatter diagram also insert scatter so this is my output for scatter diagram i don't want this it's quite scattered quite quite dispersed values are quite dispersed and there are no values on x axis till 5 so i'll just change this so i'll have a better look at my data i can have a better look at my spread of the data almost there is no value till 7 also okay fine i'll make it 7 great so i say yes there is a upward trend but that is not followed by all the data points so i may end up having few outliers also and that's why the relationship coefficient is very less 0 0.422 okay now i'll try to draw the trend line now in trend line actually if you go for different other types of trend lines uh, you can try this because that is not part of the course but uh, remaining are non-linear uh, relationships like exponential logarithmic polynomial power moving average so you can try these lines also so just take in it data set and uh, just click on other options and look at what kind of trend line you are getting just make sure that you are displaying equation on chart and you are displaying r square value so for different kind of uh, trend lines you'll get different equations and different r square values and generally uh, i'm just giving one hint to you generally you should select that data model or that kind of relationship out of available relationships which will give you the highest r square value okay so fine but that is not part of this course so we'll go ahead with linear only so i'll display the equation and r square value now you can see r square value is very less 0.7 is not at all accepted in any case be it any kind of domain 0.7 is not at all accepted okay fine uh so this is concerning linear equation so i'll just give you example uh if you want to go for other trend lines so if i go for logarithmic 
and if i say display equation and display r square even in case of logarithmic i am getting 0.15 as r square so even logarithmic is not a good option if i go for exponential almost the r square is 0.15 uh, if i go for power again the r square is only 15 so it seems like this linear relationship is the best option so uh, well, polynomial with order of 4 has a maximum r square of 3.2 yes but uh, maybe others will not understand polynomials so i'm not considering that right now so we'll go ahead with linear relationship right now but this is how you can use the other different types of relationships in excel which are non-linear type of relationships and uh, uh, we'll try to cover that in the advanced course after this course fine so right now this is your equation line equation and this is your r square value based on this analysis only i can say my x is not good predictor of y this indicates only education is not a good predictor of earning so uh, though you may have very less education or you may have very highest level of education it is not a good predictor of earning only education is not a good predictor of earning but still we'll go ahead we'll do the regression analysis so i'll go to data section data analysis and then regression i'll click on okay uh, the input uh, range i'll select education sorry uh, this is why so i'll select earnings so this is my earnings column input x so this is my x column labels yes i have labels in my first row output range suppose i want to start my output from this location and yes i'll keep on uh, residuals option because i want to see how my data points deviates from my expected values and then i'll click on ok so this is what i get as regression output so r square value is 0.17 which i'm getting here which is very less uh, and then uh, you have this coefficient output which is very uh, uh, much same yes minus 240 is my coefficient uh, y intercept and 57.93 is my m value that is uh, x coefficient now look at residuals i'll just put this bar this uh, scatter diagram here yes so uh, we were on this uh, residuals output and uh, if you look at the residuals also this is a huge difference if you consider data point number 15 difference of 682 from the expected value is a huge difference okay so uh, i guess this is that data point yes 1507 okay so this is having a difference of 682 which is the highest one this is a huge difference if i uh, if I can consider, I will consider this as an outlier, actually. Look at other differences, which are in the range of 500 to 600. So this is another data point, 530. Another data point with huge difference. So actually all the data points which are in the range of a deviation of 500 to 600, I should consider, consider them as outliers. So either uh, the meaning of this is uh, the, all, all, all are on positive side, if you notice all three are on positive side so what different types of analysis you can do is this majorly the differences which are in the 500 and 600 these three are there and another one which is in the 500 and 600 is this but this is on negative side okay uh, there is no else observation which is in 500 and 600 so we have these four observations with the residuals which are in the range of 500 to 600 or 600 plus and out of four three are on positive side that means they are having more value than what is expected value so they are earning more than what is expected earning for their education level for their education level they are earning something more than what is they are expected to earn and likewise we have three cases out of four and only in one case that specific individual is earning less than what is expected to earn. So this indicates that uh, my, first of all, my education is not a good predictor of earnings. That is very clear from R square itself. Second thing, if I look at the residuals also, the dispersion is huge. That means either my data is wrong or uh, I should not consider only education to predict the earning so there has to be another set of variables apart from education and third looking at residuals i think that the probability of 
earning more than expectation in case of outliers is more compared to the negative cases. So out of four, I'm having three positive cases. That means out of four in three cases, the individual, individuals are earning a lot more than what they are expected to earn based on their education. So uh, the common trend is uh, even if you have average education, you can earn average or you can earn more than the expectation also. So education is not a good predictor of earnings. Yes, so uh, we were on this uh, residuals output and uh, if you look at the residuals also, this is a huge difference. If you consider data point number 15, difference of 682 from the expected value is a huge difference. Okay, so uh, I guess this is that data point. Yes, 1507. Okay, so this is having a difference of 682, which is the highest one. This is a huge difference. If I uh, if I can consider, I will consider this as an outlier, actually. Look at other differences, which are in the range of 500 to 600. So this is another data point, 530. Another data point with huge difference. So actually all the data points which are in the range of a deviation of 500 to 600, I should consider, consider them as outliers. So either uh, the meaning of this is, uh, the, all, all, all are on positive side, if you notice all three are on positive side so what different types of analysis you can do is this majorly the differences which are in the 500 and 600 these three are there and another one which is in the 500 and 600 is this but this is on negative side okay uh, there is no else observation which is in 500 and 600 so we have these four observations with the residuals which are in the range of 500 to 600 or 600 plus. And out of four, three are on positive side. That means they are having more value than what is expected value. So they are earning more than what is expected earning. For their education level, for their education level, they are earning something more than what is they are expected to earn. And likewise, we have three cases out of four. And only in one case, that specific individual is earning less than what is expected to earn. So this indicates that uh, my, first of all, my education is not a good predictor of earnings. That is very clear from R square itself. Second thing, if I look at the residuals also, the dispersion is huge. 
that means either my data is wrong or uh, i should not consider only education to predict the earning so there has to be another set of variables apart from education and third looking at residuals i think that the probability of earning more than expectation in case of outliers is more compared to the negative cases so out of four i am having three positive cases that means out of four in three cases the individual individuals are earning lot more than what they are expected to earn based on their education so uh, the common trend is uh, even if you have average education you can earn average or you can earn more than the expectation also so education is not a good predictor of earnings am i clear to all of you is this analysis clear to you yes okay fine now based on all this analysis you have another sheet called as correlation 3 in which i have given a problem to you uh, this problem as such uh, we will solve tomorrow actually this is a problem of different type of regression so whatever problems we have discussed be it the first uh, excel sheet so uh, you can consider this first excel sheet okay so be it the first excel sheet where we have considered x and y and everything be it the second excel sheet uh, where we have discussed earnings and education so whatever we have done we have dealt with only y equal to something into x plus b so that is called as simple regression so both the uh, uh, sheets what are examples we have solved today are the examples of simple regression that means we have considered only one dependent and one independent variable y and x that is called a simple regression tomorrow we are going to start with multiple regression multiple regression where we'll have one y that is one dependent variable and multiple independent variable so this is my x1 this is my x2 and this is my x3 so we are going to consider multiple independent variables for one dependent variable but right now till tomorrow what you can do is just check whether only x1 just consider these two columns and check only x1 is x1 a good predictor of y then check then consider this column and this column and just check whether only x2 is a good predictor of y then take this y and this x3 and just check whether x3 is a good predictor of y so that is your homework for tomorrow just uh, go and check individual x values whether they are good predictor of y and then tomorrow we'll start with multiple regression and then i'll share few of more data sets with you uh, more complex data sets well where we'll uh, try to do multiple regression based analysis also am i okay am i clear so complete this task by tomorrow and we'll meet tomorrow at 8 am that's it from me from to today's session we'll meet tomorrow thank you thank you sir thank you sir